So if you watched the previous video on easy water, then um, what we're going to do is something very similar. Now in that previous video, I found out something interesting about methyl blue, that if you put methyl blue into the solution, it improved the performance. Now methyl blue is actually um, photosensitive, it degrades in sunlight. So I thought, hey, something's happening there with the light. What else do we have that's light active that we can give it a go? And I don't know if you remember these things. These are zinc sulfide nanoparticles in water, and we made them using bistyurea zinc formate. And I did a video on that and how to make those previously. So if we've got a light reactive substance in there, surely we should get a better performance out of it. So what I've got in here is our zinc sulfide nanoparticles that we know are photoactive. Now, whenever you do something like this, you always get various comments on how it must be a battery. So what we've got here is quite simply a piece of plastic. And that plastic has got the ink on it and the ink has been dried in uh, a magnetic field to make sure that we've got lines. Now, without a doubt, this is going to be a pretty poor performer. And the main reason it's going to be a poor performer is because the lines are going to represent a serious resistance to anything that can happen in there. But what we're doing, really, is proving a point of principle before we move on, that something is happening in there. So if I connect that up, just like that, and dip it into my nanoparticle solution, you'll see we get a tiny reading. And it really is tiny. But we are getting a reading. Now, without a doubt, because it's identical, it's symmetrical. Whether it's plus or minus is really a matter of uh, pure chance. We know that this stuff is forced to flow over the surface, but the direction of the flow is going to be random, and once it starts to flow, it's going to continue flowing there. But we don't know which way around it's going to be. It's going to be plus or minus. It's probably going to swap, so that's why we see it going up and down all of the time. So there's something we need to do in order to improve that. Now, my first thought was to use this structure. This is where we've got two coppers, so we can't get a... Um, metal to metal galvanic reaction because we've got the same metal but the copper obviously runs down with the lines so that's acting like a current collector so we should get a better result from this because we've got a way of collecting the current so the resistance of the device won't knock everything out equally though it's going to be fairly random as whether it's minus or positive because we've got no way of deciding which way around that's going to go so we connect up our current collectors and dip that in then we get a much better reading. And of course it's going to zip around and pop up and down because it's swapping around in itself. So we want something to stop that swapping around. And what we can do is use the work function of two different metals. So here we've got exactly the same structure but now we've got an aluminium and a copper. But again, to stop that comment, hey, it's just a battery, what I'm going to do is pop it in so that the aluminium isn't in contact with this fluid. Because in order for it to act like a battery, in order for there to be a galvanic reaction between those two metals, those two metals have to be bridged by a conducting solution. Now, if this lacy solution is conducting, the fact that they're not bridged, and there we go, will mean it can't be galvanic. Now, there's something obviously very interesting in the previous one. Somebody said mentioned it might be a galvanic action, but then of course it was distilled water. Distilled water is actually insulating, not conducting, so the chances are it wasn't. Here, because we've got one electrode totally out of the solution, we can't have um, a battery set up going on. And you can see now, because we've got an organised flow, and we've got current collectors and lack of resistor, a lower resistance on the internal of the device, then we're getting a pretty healthy reading out of that. Now, the theory is, of course, that this is photoactive. So what I've got dangling here is a xenon bulb, and it's a xenon bulb to give me a broad scope, broad spectra light source. So what I'm going to do is turn that bulb on, and then leave it for a little bit, and we'll see what happens to that reading. And let's come back to that in, say, 20 minutes. All right, so here we are uh, 15 minutes later, and you can see it settled down round about 1147, 1148. So let's unplug it. Now, the change down is not instant, and you'd expect that because the uh, easy layers are being built up over time and they respond to light. So those layers will probably break down now, and that should drop.
and you can see it beginning to drop gently. Anyway, uh, I thought that was interesting, I thought I'd share it with you, and I uh, hope you enjoyed watching, and thank you very much.